Okay, Robbie, so if you could just say, you know, on June 4th, 2012 was a day I'll never forget. Look at the camera? Or? No, just me. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, June 4th, 2012 was a day I'll never forget. Great. Tell us, um, and then maybe it was a day, and tell us what happened um, that day that changed your life forever, really. Um, it, was a, it was a day that I was diagnosed with testicular cancer, and forever will change my life and how I look at things. Um, could you maybe say um, that word cancer to me meant, and then just finish? Cancer to me meant, you know, sickness, death. You know, I didn't know what to expect. Okay. Did you have cancer in your family anywhere? Yes, on my father's side. Maybe to say on my father's side there is, and then tell, explain. On my father's side, there's a history of cancer. I have a little sister with leukemia, with, that had leukemia and other family members that suffer from cancer too. Is this your twin sister? No, I have a, a half sister on my father's side. Wow, did she make it? Yeah, she did, wow, she did. Oh my gosh. Um, to fight the cancer I went through and then just go ahead and? Um, to fight the cancer, I, I went through surgery and uh, so you're just taking some medicine. And that's it? Mm-hmm. Maybe say, when I woke up from surgery, do you, when did they tell you it was cancer? After. Like, they told my wife and my mom beforehand. So, so I, uh, you know. Maybe say, when I woke up. When I, when I woke up from surgery, um, they told me I had cancer. And I just didn't know what to think. I was speechless. Maybe say, when my wife told me the news, you what? Well, I went back to sleep. <laughs> but, <laughs> you're, so, you're a drug dealer. Yeah, when, when my wife and my mom told me the news that I actually had cancer after my surgery, um, you know, I was, I was speechless and didn't really know what to think. I didn't know what was next. Okay. When did you tell us when you found out that they got it all and you didn't have to have any further treatment? Um, for a, for a couple weeks after, they had to send the slides off to to Stanford to get a second opinion on it, because at first they thought it was going to be something that I would have to have chemo for, but then after after a couple weeks, I found out that I actually wasn't going to have to have chemo, and that I just just I needed to keep track of it, and I didn't have cancer at the time. So you were cancer free. Yeah. Maybe say, when they told me I was cancer-free, tell us what you thought. When they told me I was cancer-free, I just thought that I, I'm, I'm lucky and very blessed. Let's see. Um, football to me has always meant... Football to me has always meant overcoming obstacles in a game and in practice and life in general. You're going to... You're gonna, come up to things that you know are difficult and I think that if it if it wasn't for football or wasn't for what I've learned at, at BYU I would have you know never came out on top like I did I would have never been able to overcome the stress and everything that comes with having cancer perfect maybe say um, I came to BYU uh, in the in, in the fall I was in the fall the spring fall? summer fall the fall of what year of, and um, what that meant to you? Um, when I came to BYU in the fall of '06, you know, I was just I was just happy. I didn't really know what to expect, but I knew that I was living my dream. It's something that I've always wanted to do. Come to BYU, you know, play football at BYU was something that I I've always wanted ever since I was little. I know that like I remember when I was getting recruited. Um, if I would have got recruited by any other big school, I still would have committed to BYU just because, you know, I've always loved this place so much. BYU to me means? BYU to me means faith um, in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know that without, without Him, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have all the, you know, I wouldn't have a scholarship. I wouldn't have just other things that, come with it. I wouldn't have my wife. I wouldn't have uh, my family, like, you know, so united like we are. And I'm, I'm very thankful for that. 
When I told Bronco Mendenhall about my cancer, he... When I told Bronco Mendenhall about my cancer, and he was kind of speechless a little bit because there was a time where like I, this summer I kind of just disappeared and didn't really tell anybody until I knew that I was going to have to have to have cancer. I disappeared for like a week and you know he was very supportive. He asked me if I needed anything, just give him a call. He was always wanting to be up to date and I'm, I'm very thankful that he was, he was there for me and supportive. For when my teammates learned about it, they... No, when my teammates learned about it, you know, they didn't really believe me at first. They were like, are you serious? But when I told them, like, yeah, they, they were just, they were, you know, very supportive and concerned. And I'm very thankful for everyone and all of them, all my teammates. They, they've really helped me through this. And made, even when I came back, they've shown me, you know, the utmost love and just been there for me and very supportive. Um, I came back to the team. Do you remember the day or when it was? Um, it was maybe not the exact day, but end of August. End of August. Maybe when, when I came back to the team at the end of August, that meant to me. When I came back to the team at the end of August, that meant to me that you know I've I've won. I've overcome what has has put me back. I knew that going into this season. Oh, I I didn't really know if I was going to play uh, going into the season because you know having cancer it takes a toll on you mentally, and I knew that. At the moment, you know, whenever fall camp started, I wasn't going to be able to be able to do it. So whenever I came back, I was I was super excited. I was just happy to be around my teammates, my coaches, and just be back into football. My prognosis for the future is. What's that? Oh, you mean like for cancer? Yeah. My prognosis for the future is you no know, cancer free. I have a I have a checkup in in December, so we'll see what goes goes good. But you know. Ever since I had cancer, I've always, you know, been doing self-checks and just making sure that uh, I'm good, uh, good. So, you know, it's, my prognosis is good. Having a disease like cancer has taught me. Having a disease like cancer has taught me that there's worse things that can happen to you. You know, even if a football season or school or life doesn't go the way you want it to, there's always worse things that could happen. Even with me, there's, there was worse things that could have happened with my cancer, but I was really extremely blessed and lucky that I didn't have to go through chemo, I didn't have to go through all that stuff. Now that I've been given a second chance to play football, I want my final season to be? Now that I've been given a second chance to play football, I want my final season to be memorable. I just, I just want to be here for, for my team. I just want to be here and show people that, you know, it's possible to come back from things like that and that, like I said earlier, there's, there's worse things that can happen to you and that we're extremely blessed to be here on this earth and if we don't take life, you know, a day at a time and, you know, and do it to our fullest, you know, we're, we're not doing our best. Life for me today is? Life for me today is, you know, the same like it was before. A lot of times I even forget that I had cancer. I'm just, I'm just um, extremely blessed to have my wife, my family, and they're, they're a real foundation to me, and I love them. Okay, thanks, Robbie. Thanks right. so much. Dot net. Kathy Aiken at Comcast dot net. Yeah, Kathy dot Aiken. Kathy dot Aiken. Yeah. yeah, I got that. Um, and if any, any Robbie, any pic other pictures you have of football? Do you have like a high school picture? Mm-hmm. Um, and do you have any at BYU that BYU wouldn't have? Maybe oh, if if the quality is good, if we get hey Brett, Hello. if we do that, so would you mind just emailing him to me? Okay, individually? sounds good. Okay. I'll do that. That way, I think we get a better. I do that. At, I want to get home tonight. <laughs> How are you? It's falling. Uh oh. Very far with those kids and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. That was cool. So some of them are going to Boise, right? Yeah, like uh, there's about. Well, I know. Is that uh, good, Jacob? Okay. Markel. Okay, here 